for the game. So let's go. Welcome all to the next session on Know How series. This video is about the second part of the DC transfer characteristics of CMOS inverter. Wherein here we are going to analyze about the switching threshold and the beta ratio effects on the CMOS inverter. Finally, we will simulate the CMOS inverter using LT Spice, and then we will understand about the DC transfer characteristics corresponding to the beta ratio effects. This table is a summary of the CMOS inverter regions of operation. Those have not watched the previous video on DC transfer characteristics. I would recommend you all. to have a look into that video for better understanding of the regions of operations of cmos inverter we have seen five different regions of operations for cmos inverter and we have also analyzed how pmos and nmos are going to behave in each of these regions either in cutoff or in linear or in saturation region and the corresponding output voltage values also we have seen based on these observations here we have a graph called as voltage transfer characteristics or we call that as the dc transfer characteristics graph for the cmos inverter and here we have the five different regions of operation and each region we have seen that how nmos is going to behave and how pmos is going to behave and this graph shows the generalized range of values for the input now comes the actual discussion for this particular video where we are going to first discuss about the switching threshold and then we will proceed for the beta ratio effects of the cmos inverter and here we see that the graph shows only one region which is nothing but the region c where in this region is a very important region which is called as the transition region which is going to help you in switching between high to low or between low to high and here we can see that the switching threshold is going to be exactly vdd by 2 when in case of input value and when v in is equal to vdd by 2 we can observe that my v out is also going to be vdd by 2 and in this region we observe that the nmos is also going to be in saturation and pmos is also going to be in saturation when both are going to be in saturation region we say that v in equal to v out and this point we call it as a transition region and here we are going to derive the switching threshold based on the current equations of both nmos and pmos so when we are going to consider both of them in saturation region here we have taken idsn is equal to idsp where idsn is the drain to source current of nmos working under saturation region and idsp is the drain to source current of pmos in saturation region Now before equating the drain to source currents of both nmos and pmos we will first understand what are the values of vgsn vdsn vgsp and vdsp we have seen this already in the previous video here we will straight away write those equations as vgsn is equal to v in and vdsn which is the drain to source voltage of nmos is going to be v out since nmos source it is always connected to ground here we neglect the source voltage and therefore we get it as v in and v out for better understanding please recap the previous video of dc transfer characteristics of cmos inverter the link is provided in the description box below and vgsp is equal to v in minus vdd and vdsp is equal to v out minus vdd these equations will help us in elaborating the drain to source current of nmos and pmos now we will start writing the drain to source currents of nmos and pmos since both are working in saturation regions so the drain to source current of nmos will be beta n by 2 into vgsn minus vtn the whole square equal to minus of beta p by 2 into vgsp minus mod vtp the whole square neglecting the common terms and taking square root on both the sides we will be getting vgs n minus vtn equal to root of let me write it together as root of beta p by beta n into vgsp minus mod vtp 
now we will start substituting the values for vgsn and vgsp so now vgsn we know that it is v in and we have vtn which is equal to root of beta p by beta n into for vgsp it is v in minus vdd minus mod vtp now bringing all the v in terms together at one side we have v in plus root of beta p by beta n into v in and here these terms will become vtn plus vdd plus mod vtp into root of beta p by beta n so now taking it in common so this will be v in and this we are going to replace it with vm which is the switching threshold value which is equal to vtn in the numerator we have plus vdd plus mod of vtp into root of beta p by beta n divided by 1 plus root of beta p by beta n so this is our switching threshold value we know that beta n can be equal to beta p if it is a symmetrical CMOS inverted design and also we can substitute that VTN equal to minus of VTP mod VTP so therefore the equation reduces to VM equal to VDD by 2 so we can substitute and see here when vtn is equal to minus mod vtp so these two terms will get cancelled and when beta p is equal to beta n so all these terms will become 1 and therefore this will become vdd by 1 plus 1 that will become as vdd by 2 for a symmetrical cmos inverted design with beta n equal to beta p now we will see the different beta ratio effects when beta p is greater than beta n or when beta p is less than beta n what is going to happen to this switching threshold vdd by 2 of cmos inverter we know that vm is equal to vdd by 2 and here we write it in general the beta as beta p by beta n so therefore when beta is equal to 1 we can write it as beta p equal to beta n and this is for a symmetrical CMOS inverted design. And what is beta? Beta is nothing but mu n C ox into W by L, neglecting the oxide capacitance to be equal when we consider the same gate oxide material for both PMOS and NMOS. So here the mu n into W by L n is going to be equal to mu P W by L ratio of PMOS. So therefore, we know that the mobility of NMOS when we have a pure silicon it is going to be approximately 1500 centimeter square per whole second for a pure silicon and similarly if you take it for a pure silicon the mobility of holes will be 500 centimeter square per whole second so which means from both these values we can say that the mobility of electrons is going to be approximately three times the mobility of holes. So when we substitute mu n equal to three times mu p, we will get an equation like this where w by l of p mos will be equal to three times w by l ratio of n mos. So only when this is satisfied, we get a symmetrical design of CMOS inverter. So basically, the beta ratio is dependent on the W by L ratio of PMOS and NMOS, where for a symmetrical CMOS inverter design with beta equal to 1, my W by L ratio of PMOS should be 3 times the W by L ratio of NMOS. Only then, the whole mobility can be matched with the electron mobility because we always know that the electron mobility is higher than the 
holds mobility. Also, we know that for a symmetrical CMOS inverter design with beta equal to 1, we know that the switching threshold Vm is going to be equal to Vdt by 2. So, this we have obtained in the previous slide. Now, when we consider that beta is less than 1, what will happen to the switching threshold that we are going to observe? When beta is less than 1, which means that my beta n is greater than beta p, so wherein I will have a strong NMOS, which means my W by L ratio of NMOS should be greater than W by L ratio of PMOS. And in this beta less than 1, I get a low skewed inverter design. And the VM, which is VDD by 2, will try to decrease. And the curve, which exactly cuts at VDD by 2, since VDD by 2 value has decreased, the curve will also shift towards left side. This is for beta less than 1. Now, when we consider that beta is greater than 1, which means my beta P is going to be greater than beta N. So, therefore, I get a strong PMOS where the W by L ratio of PMOS will be greater than my W by L ratio of ENMOS. And therefore, I get a high skewed inverter. This we will see it in a separate video of what is low skewed inverter design and high skewed inverter design and my VDD by 2 value would have got increased and the curve will shift towards right side instead of staying exactly at VDD by 2 it would have shifted towards right side when we have beta greater than 1. This graph shows the CMOS inverters DC transfer characteristics with beta equal to 1. We know that it is going to be the exact DC transfer characteristics of CMOS inverter in ideal condition where the switching threshold retains at VDD by 2. And the other two lines are actually indicating the beta ratio effects on the CMOS inverter where when the beta ratio is changed when it is greater than 1, we have a very strong PMOS and the VDD by 2 value has got increased and the curve has shifted towards right side. And when we see that for beta is less than 1, we have a very strong NMOS and VDD by 2 value has got decreased and therefore the curve has shifted towards left side. And at this stage, we say that the inverter will have a low skewed design and when beta is greater than 1, we have a high skewed inverter design. Now here comes the LD Spice model of CMOS inverter design. Those have not explored the LD Spice model before. You can look into a video which I have shared the link in the description box for you all to explore the different components that are available in the LD Spice library. And here for the CMOS inverter design, we require one single PMOS and one NMOS where we are concentrating mainly on the beta ratio effects, where the beta ratio is straightly dependent on the W by L ratio. When we consider a symmetrical CMOS inverter design, both PMOS and NMOS will have the equal W by L ratios. Here we can look at that. And since I have taken here the PMOS and NMOS as 180 nanometer technology, the lens is specified as 0.18 micron. And for the DC analysis, we have taken dot TCVG of 0, 1.8 and it is varying in an incremental value of 0.2. Now when we have to change the values of W by L, I have just right clicked on the components and you can see that you can edit the values of W. So which will try to change the beta values. And I have created the other uh, CMOS inverter design with varying W by L ratio. But here we can see that the W by L ratio of PMOS is less when compared to the W by L ratio of NMOS. When the W by L ratio of PMOS is less, we can say that we have a very strong NMOS and it is a low skewed inverter design. 
where the VDD by 2 value will try to decrease and this is indicating where beta n is greater than beta p. So now we will see the last circuit wherein we have our W equal to 2 for PMOS which means that the W by L ratio of PMOS is greater than the W by L ratio of NMOS. So this is a high skewed inverter design where the VDD by 2 value should actually increase and the curve should shift towards the right side. Now when we try to run the simulation for beta equal to 1 value which means beta n is equal to beta p I get a curve like this which is the DC transfer characteristics of CMOS inverter of a symmetrical design wherein we can see that we have a cut the transition region occurs exactly at VDD by 2 since the VDD is 1.8 we can see that the transition occurs at 0.9 volts and when we try to simulate for beta n greater than beta p so I will just run the simulation so we can see that here we see that beta n is greater than beta p so therefore the output curve will come here like this where we, this is a low skewed inverter design where the VDD by 2 value has decreased and the curve has shifted towards left side. Now the last circuit is this one we will just run this again so here we will be getting the output like this which is for beta p greater than beta n which is a high skewed inverter design wherein the VDD by 2 value has increased and the curve has shifted towards right side. This slide shows you the schematic view of the CMOS inverter for three different configurations of W by L ratio and after simulating in the LT spice we can see that the graphs for beta less than 1 and beta equal to 1 and beta greater than 1 we can see that it is exactly at VDD by 2 and the values are marked here in this rectangular boxes here it is VDD by 2 value is decreasing for beta less than 1 and for beta greater than 1 from the VDD by 2 value we can see that the value has got increased and the curve has shifted towards right side hope you have understood about the DC transfer characteristics of CMOS inverter and the LT spice model and especially we have seen about the beta ratio effects of the CMOS inverter and how it is changing the switching threshold point for each of the beta values or the W by L aspect ratio of CMOS inverter. Thank you all for watching this video through Electronics Insight channel.